Is inflation out of control? And what is this thing I have hidden back here to demonstrate a crypto economics principle? Welcome to Market Power. My name is Craig. And today we are going to do another episode of hashtag nominal talk. It's like hashtag real talk, except a little bit inflated. Today, I want to cover a couple of different topics that have just caught my eye. They're related to economics, things that I think that are interesting that I want to talk about, but I can't quite dedicate a full video to. I'll provide the links to a lot of things that I'm talking about here in my newsletter. So go ahead and check out in the description below if you want to find more information about what I'm talking about today. First, let's get into the topic of inflation. So the big news a few weeks ago is that the CPI numbers, the consumer price index numbers for April 2021 showed 4.2% inflation year over year. A lot of people said that economists were caught off guard by such a high inflation number. And there were a lot of concerns that inflation is just running out of control. So what are my reactions to this? First, it's really silly to say that this was totally unexpected. If you actually go back to the beginning of the pandemic and you look in April 2020, the CPI was much lower than expected. We were afraid of deflation. This is something I talked about right when all this was starting. So of course, if you compare the price level to a year ago, it's going to look like really high inflation when reality, it's just correcting back to what it should be at. Now, I do think it's still a little bit higher than we would expect, all things considered. But again, this is a good sign. We had so many businesses that had to shut down a year ago. And inflation is the economy telling these businesses that it's okay to start back up again. Remember at the end of summer last year, when COVID was kind of looked like it was going away, it looked like the economy was safe to open. And then boom, we get hit by the second wave. It's really hard for businesses when they don't know what to expect with the future. Do you start those supply lines again? Do you get things going only to have to shut them down all again and waste all of that effort? So right now, inflation is telling all these businesses that yes, the economy is open. We need things to go into production again. Now, one of the places that I see this being a big deal is in construction materials. We live in an area where there's a lot of construction going on right now, and we just constantly hear about how lumber is so expensive or all these materials are just so hard to get. Well, that's because lumber mills a year ago were only at 40% capacity. By getting prices higher, what we're doing is signaling to these companies to open those up, get them to maximum capacity, put stuff out there so we can have our economy running again. Right now, I am not super concerned with inflation. Obviously, it's unfortunate that I have to pay higher prices for a few things. But in reality, I think that this is going to be a temporary phenomenon as we get through businesses reopening, as we get supply chains moving again. And then we're going to see this come back and we're not going to have to worry about it so much. I thought it'd be fun and interesting to try and forecast inflation for May 2021. And I've already shown you that my forecasting skills aren't top notch, so they are better than Freakonomics if you wanna check out that video up here. I'm gonna give you my forecast for May 2021. I'm gonna show you how I came to it. But first, let me get through a few of these other topics so that way we can get some of these really fun things out there. Something that's really exciting to me is that this week, United Airlines announced a contract with Boom, the supersonic startup, to buy 15 of their supersonic jets. Now, I've been lightly following Boom for a few years now. Nothing serious. I wouldn't have been able to give you anything like in depth other than a couple weeks ago, I saw this really interesting article about the technology that Boom's trying to bring in. Boom's goal is to get you anywhere in the world under four hours for less than a hundred dollars which just seems insane to think about right now but they're really pouring into the economics of supersonic flight one of the things that seems really fascinating to me if i understand it correctly is that boom has a technology that allows it to extract atmospheric carbon dioxide, you know, those greenhouse gases that everyone's worried about and convert those into fuel. That means the jet is lighter. That means it's carbon neutral. It's got so many interesting economics behind it. I just get excited when I see these companies that are really pushing the frontier. Boom to me seems like a SpaceX Tesla type company where they are trying to do something above and beyond just another type of app. 
So the next news that I want to talk about is actually what I have hidden right back here. And that is this big news in the art world that this Italian artist was able to sell an invisible statue for $18,000. Now, obviously it would have been really cool to bring that on here. I couldn't get an authentic invisible statue. So instead I have an artist replica right here, as you can see, it's pretty exciting that I was able to get this on the show for you today. I know pulling some big strings around here. The reason why this stuck out to me is because the only physical thing that the buyers of this invisible statue are going to receive is a certificate of authentication. Now I've talked about certificates of authentication in my video about what NFTs do. And this just really shows why the art market is where NFTs have thrived. The art market is used to just the craziest, stupidest stuff already. Of course, NFTs are going to be a good fit. It is time for the hyperinflation segment of hashtag nominal talk, where I'm just going to give you key one line insights from articles I read this week that I think are really interesting. First, a 280 pound hunk of whale vomit sold for one and a half million dollars this week. Apparently it's incredibly valuable for its use in perfumes. If you use any of these app based delivery services like DoorDash or Uber Eats, turns out only about two and a half percent of your bill goes to the app's profits. Everything else gets really eaten up in cost, and that's why these companies rely on scale and tons of data to help optimize their delivery services. Finally, Disney. We tend to think of this as a movie entertainment company where they generate IP and then they spread it out to their other services, but turns out Disney's theme parks division generated more than twice the revenue as its movie studios division. That is something that I read in Matthew Ball's essay on what is an entertainment company. Super interesting, Matthew Ball has written so many interesting essays on entertainment, streaming, and what has caught my eye a lot is the metaverse, which I'll probably be talking about more on this channel. Go ahead and check out Matthew Ball's page. Okay, so let's get to my forecast for May 2021 inflation. This is not gonna be a regular segment. This is just something that I thought was interesting and I had two steps that I followed that I wanted to share with you. My first step was finding a base rate, just finding something that I could start from and then think about whether it made sense or not. And so what seemed like the most logical base rate was just to assume no inflation from April to May. Now, May 2020 was similar to April 2020 where prices were depressed. In fact, it was actually lower than what we saw in April 2020. So if we take that same number from April, but use it for May 2020, to May 2021, what we find is that inflation is looking like 4.3%, so a smidge higher than that 4.2%, but this is a base rate. So then the second step is to adjust this base rate off of what I've seen in other data, whether I think this is too high or too low. If we assume that prices are increasing at the same rate as we saw through March and April, then that's gonna bring this up to 5% year over year inflation. The question is, is it reasonable to assume that they were at the same rate? Well, the CPI is a weighted basket of prices of lots of different goods and services. Some of the heaviest weights are apparel, food, and housing. Now, if you look at apparel, it looks like over the past couple months, apparel has been pretty flat. I'm not counting on that contributing much. I don't see any reason why apparel should be really increasing that fast. Food, on the other hand, has been increasing at a constant rate. Seems like it should continue to increase constantly, so maybe it's gonna be at the same rate as March and April. Housing is the one that receives the greatest weight and it's the one where we've seen some of the craziest increases in prices. In fact, if you look through 2021, the CPI has been increasing at an increasing rate where it gets higher and higher each month. From what I can tell, housing sales slowed down in May partly because they're just running out of houses to sell, but also I'm still hearing crazy stories about people selling their houses at absurd rates. So I think it's reasonable to assume that yes, the prices are increasing at the same rate or more than they were in March and April. So I'm gonna give you my number and keep in mind that I am saying this a week before the official numbers are released. In fact, this is published a few days before those numbers are released, but I'm gonna put it at 5.1 to 5.2 percent year over year. That seems really big now that I'm saying it out loud, given that April was 4.2 percent and I'm predicting a whole percentage point higher. Maybe this is just going to be absurd to say it's going to be that high, but hey, let me know in the comments below if I was right or not. 